on tonight's episode of Mr. Norris's In Case You Missed It. We look at the election of 1824, a narrow defeat for Andrew Jackson, and a possible corrupt bargain. Hey, hi, hello, and what is up, everybody? It's your host, Mr. Norris, the history teacher with the good hair. And tonight we're going to be talking about the corrupt bargain, a.k.a. the election of 1824, where Andrew Jackson feels that he is cheated out of the White House, cheated out of the presidency. All right, let's get into it. What takes place? Well, if you've watched any of my previous videos on Andrew Jackson, you know that in the early 1800s, he was a massive celebrity. He was uh, renowned throughout the nation, really considered a rock star, especially after the War of 1812 and his incredibly impressive performance in the Battle of New Orleans where his troops mow down, kill or capture 2,000 British soldiers in about two hours. Ridiculous. Well, anyways, after um, the War of 1812, he actually leads a conquest of Spanish Florida that adds Florida to the United States. And then he decides to go back to Congress and actually serve as a senator for a year or two. And then people start getting into his ear that, you know what, you may potentially stand a chance in this presidential election in 1824 of winning. And Andrew Jackson starts thinking about it. All right, maybe I'll run. Now, who are his opponents going to be? Andrew Jackson is very different than who the opponents are. These other men are career politicians, have been there, have done this. Other than like a two or three year stint as a congressman, Andrew Jackson really doesn't have political experience. He's a magnificent general, but as far as in the political world, he's kind of, you know, a novice. He's, you know, new to the game, if you will, or just not very seasoned. So who would his opponents be in 1824? Well, the front runner would have to be John Quincy Adams, and he's the son of the second president, John Adams. He is a former secretary of state, and he has literally been groomed since the time he was a child uh, to eventually become president. He's super intelligent, uh, very well educated, and just like looks the part of a future president. Uh, then you have Henry Clay, who was Speaker of the House at the time from Kentucky, and again, career politician, knows the D.C. game, um, knows how to handle it. And then last but not least, you have William H. Crawford of Georgia, who at the time was a Secretary of the Treasury. So again, another career politician. But Jackson decides to run anyways, and uh, like a lot of people tell him, you're, you have the most widespread appeal of any of these four people. And that actually proves to be accurate in the election of 1824. If you look at the results, what, how it plays out, basically most of the people who ran won their regions of the country or did very well in their regions of the country. Uh, John Quincy Adams dominates Massachusetts. He uh, you know, wins a lot of the electoral votes and, and, and voting from that area. Uh, Henry Clay from Kentucky does pretty well out in the frontier, out in the West, as you would expect. William Crawford of Georgia does pretty well in the South. Andrew Jackson's really the only candidate that does well kind of everywhere because everybody knows who he is. He winds up winning the popular vote. He wins about 44% of the vote. And he actually wins the most electoral votes. Keyword there, most. He doesn't win a majority of the electoral votes. Ah, Now, remember, this is how our system works. The Electoral College, you have to win over half the electoral votes to become president. And Andrew Jackson doesn't do that. In that scenario, the 12th Amendment states that the vote for the president would go to the House of Representatives. And it also states that only the top three finishers will be considered. Well, in this election of 1824, the top three finishers are uh, Andrew Jackson, John Quincy Adams, and William Crawford. The guy who comes in fourth place is Henry Clay. Henry Clay happens to be the Speaker of the House of Representatives at that time, basically the leader of the House of Representatives. How convenient. Now, Henry Clay, when he goes to talk to the House of Representatives about their choice, has some serious reservations about Andrew Jackson. Number one, Henry Clay thinks Andrew Jackson is, well, crazy. Uh, if you watch my video about Andrew Jackson's background, he's been in duels, he's a brawler, he's got an extremely short temper. If you cross him, he might literally try to kill you. And Henry Clay knows this about Andrew Jackson. And he tells people in the House of Representatives, yeah, this guy's fit for a straight jacket, we can't elect him. All right. He just thinks that he's totally unfit for, for uh, office. He also thinks that Andrew Jackson doesn't have the experience that, you know, Washington would lead you to, uh, to, to need in this scenario. Um, and he just also is worried that once Andrew Jackson takes over and he has this rabid following of average people across the country who love and adore him, that he might try to seize power and overthrow the republic. So 
Henry Clay suggests that the House of Representatives goes with the clear, safe bet, uh, John Quincy Adams. This guy's been groomed since childhood to be the president. He is the safe bet. We should go with him. And that's exactly how the House of Representatives votes. They choose John Quincy Adams to become the sixth president in 1824. Now, when Jackson hears about this, and keep in mind the temper that I just described, he is furious. And basically his reaction is, shenanigans, shenanigans, right? I won the popular vote. I won the most electoral votes, and I didn't win the presidency. What the heck is going on here? Put the cherry on top. Once John Quincy Adams becomes president, who does he appoint to be his secretary of state? Henry Clay. Corruption, I smell, says Andrew Jackson. This is a corrupt bargain, and that's what he begins calling this election, a corrupt bargain, that it was rigged, that it was unfair, and that he was cheated out of the White House. He doesn't necessarily say this out loud, but internally, Andrew Jackson swears revenge in that in 1828, he will run again and he will win the White House. And basically, right after the election of 1824, him and his base start gearing up for the election of 1828. They kind of branch off from the Democratic Republican Party and him and his supporters form the Democratic Party, which little known fact here, the oldest running political party in the world. Crazy, I know, right? Starts with Andrew Jackson. He has his eyes on that election of 1828. And as far as Andrew Jackson is concerned, he will not be stopped in four years. He's going to take the White House. And we'll just have to see what happens there. So there you have it. That's the corrupt bargain. Andrew Jackson basically gets cheated out of the White House in his eyes. Uh, in Henry Clay's eyes, he made a good decision keeping, you know, senior crazy pants out of the White House. Um, but that's, that's it there, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, or subscribe. Remember that history is life. And in the words of my buddy George Washington back here, the surest basis for public happiness is knowledge. So go out there and get some. Have a good night, everybody.